Hello everybody and welcome back to Provost Gaming and more Democracy 3 Australia, playing on maximum difficulty with all of the expansions. Alright, so we've had two successful years in office thus far. Some of our law and order problems are starting to kind of get into, uh, into shape. We've been increasing the health and production of our workers, the GDP is on the upswing, at least slightly. But we also had to raise up taxes rather substantially, in fact to a 50% income tax, in order to deal with some of our deficit. And it's only going to get worse if we're not careful, so one of the reasons it's really important that we raise our taxes as much as we did, though, even if it is basically just straight-up robbery, I mean, good lord, 50%, that's crazy. Uh, we had to do this, though, because as the deficit continues to build on our debt, it, our credit rating will continue to drop. And if our credit rating drops, then all of the interest on our debt goes up, which means our deficit goes up even further, which means our debt grows even larger, which means we lose even more credit score, and so on, and it just kind of goes into a death spiral of doom. So... Raising taxes, taking drastic measures, I think are a bit of a necessity, but it would be wise for us to spend some of the new money from this income tax and invest it back into the economy with more long-term solutions, such as small business grants, rural development grants, try to get rid of the uncompetitive economy, and so on. So this particular video, I'm going to spend a bit more effort on uh, the economic side of things, but we also need to be wary that now we are going into year three and the political honeymoon is really over, assassinations will be around every corner, which is kind of unfortunate. So I'm going to have to increase security measures at the same time, whether that be CCTV cameras, tasers, armed police, and so on, uh, just to try and survive and not get a game over. Now, what you could do in Maximum Difficulty Democracy 3 is you could save after every turn, and uh, if you die, just reload and save spam the crap out of this. It's always a random number generator. You're never guaranteed to get assassinated. You can just keep reloading until you get through and then just save at that turn and then just keep doing that again and again and never spend the money or the political capital on some of these security measures. You could do that. I'm not going to because I think that's kind of cheating. Just a little bit. So bear with me if that's uh, something I'm not willing to do. But for those of you who might suggest it, I'm aware. It, it could be useful, but I'm not going to do it. Ban livestock imports. Uh, our neighbors have foot and mouth disease in the cattle. So, we say foot and mouth, but really, let's just say mad cow. Mad cow disease in our neighbor. Do we ban their livestock imports or reject it? Um, so, farmers want us to ban it as a precaution, but of course they are motivated by self-interest. If we ban importing uh, foreign meat or cattle, then that means that the prices will go up and they can be much wealthier as local producers. So... Uh, but that actually does make sense for us. We don't want to have any health issues, and we actually are kind of trying to be a little bit more protectionist. So we are going to approve the ban, and I imagine this means that the food prices will go up slightly, but uh, that's just a price we are going to have to pay. 10% of the vote right now, which is kind of sucky, but the deficit has been reduced to less than 1 billion Australian dollars, so we have improved drastically on that front. All right, let's go for some of those long-term economic benefits that I was talking about, starting with the uncompetitive economy, which you can see is ticking back up a little bit for some reason. Uh, I guess our productivity came back down. I'm not sure why, but it did. Uh, anyway. Okay, well, uh, the best way to get rid of the uh, uncompetitive economy is to improve the production or the productivity of your citizens. The high, more productivity you have, the better, and this eventually will go away on its own. It's a very good long-term solution. But we're not looking for a long-term solution, we're looking for a short-term solution. And if that's the case, the best thing to do is to pass import tariffs. Now, what are import tariffs, if you don't know? This is, by the way, where I'm going to talk a little bit about some politics and some of my own personal views on things. So if you want to see me skip, go for it. But if you want to know what import tariffs are, uh, basically, they are a tax on all imported goods. So I, we're playing in Australia, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk from my own perspective as an American and talk about the United States. So we in the United States import a lot of goods from China, very cheap goods. So they can manufacture overseas, and they ship over here and sell them for very, very cheap. That's the idea. What we'll be doing with a tariff is applying a tax to that anytime we import a good from outside of the United States. Why would we want to do this? Well, let's suppose uh, China has... Uh, labor costs so much lower in China than it is in the United States that companies say, well, why ever build things in the United States? It's far cheaper to just build a factory in China instead of at home, and we can build the goods there and then ship them over, and as a result, there are less manufacturing jobs, less factories here in the United States. Some people don't like that, especially trade unionists or other skilled laborers um, or populist leaders like President Trump. So what they suggest then is by taxing imported goods, 
you make it more expensive, and as a result, eventually these companies will say, well, crap, why build things over there? It's actually going to be cheaper for us to just build them here in the United States. And as a result, more jobs can be preserved in certain industries here in the United States. And that sounds like a really good idea. Basically, it's saying, I can't compete with your cheap prices, so I'm going to rig the game so that we can be a little bit more competitive on a local level. That's what you're trying to do. Um, here's the problem that I have with import tariffs. And first off, I should go ahead and clarify my bias. I've said in the first video, and you've known me for a while, I consider myself to be a classical liberal and a free market capitalist. As a free market capitalist, I don't like tariffs as a general rule. Um, and here's my reasoning why. First off, I think that anytime you have a voluntary transaction, both parties can prosper. You know, the United States may lose some jobs in certain sectors, but we also get really cheap goods that bring down the cost of living for everyone else. That can be a fair trade. Not always, but it can be a fair trade as long as it's voluntary. This doesn't make me a globalist, but in principle, it's something that I like. I think there's a lot of advantages to good, strong, free global trade. Now, the other reason, though, at a local level, why I'm not okay with tariffs uh, in general, is because of the changes to the cost of living, as I already alluded to. So, for example... The United States puts a tax on Chinese import, imported goods, okay? So first off, um, where do you typically find these goods? These are cheap products that are being made at pretty low quality and sold at retailers like Walmart, for example, to who? The poor, the people who don't have as much money to spend on higher quality goods. Now, what's going to happen to these goods that are imported from China the moment you put a tariff on them? Let's say you put a 20% tariff. Are the companies going to absorb that cost in their profit margin? No, they're not. In fact, most of them can't. Walmart, for example, generally only makes a few cents of profit for these uh, very cheap items, and they, they make a good profit, a very strong profit every year, from volume sold, not from high profit margins on every good. So losing like 20% would be catastrophic. They would be losing money. What's going to happen then? Companies are going to raise the price. So your $2 cheap plastic spatula may now cost like $220, $230, $240, or something along those lines. The result being that the people who are the poorest in our society and rely on cheaper goods because they don't have as much money to spend will now go to Walmart and find that everything they usually buy has become more expensive. Their cost of living has increased. So tariffs, in a way, become an indirect tax on the American people, or in this case, the Australian people. Because the people, the consumers, are the one who are going to end up paying the cost. And even if factories do end up leaving China and coming to the United States, they're still going to be manufacturing goods at a high price that not necessarily everyone can afford. So it preserves jobs for certain industries, but everyone suffers from an indirect tax on all imported goods. Yes, it hurts China, right? If China does something we don't like and we put a, a tariff on them, yeah, it's going to hurt their economy, but it also hurts our economy. And this is one of the reasons, as a general rule, I'm opposed to tariffs. Now, I do recognize there is one particular argument I think you could make in favor of tariffs. And that is preserving the, uh, the initial startup capital required to build a factory. So, for example, suppose a manufacturer in the United States um, has a factory, but it becomes so much cheaper to build something in China that they shut down their factory, sell off all their goods, and build a new one in China. Okay. And then let's suppose something changes in China. Let's suppose that China eventually modernizes and starts increasing their standards of living and passes minimum wage laws and things become more expensive to the point where it actually would have been cheaper to just build in the United States. Well, now they have to pay a huge amount of money to rebuild a factory in the United States. Lots of money lost from building a factory in China and then having to build a new one again in the United States. You could argue that tariffs are not just a form of economic protectionism for certain sectors, but also to preserve the initial capital necessary to uh, build those factories. You could do that. I think that that's a very difficult argument to make. I'd have to see the math on it. But uh, no, as a general rule, I just don't think that that's a good idea. I think that everyone can prosper in a better free trade environment. And that's not even to mention any of the diplomatic repercussions, as is kind of suggested down here from sparking retaliation. If we throw some tariffs on China, well, who's to say that China doesn't throw some tariffs on us? And all of a sudden, it's harder for us to ship goods over to them, where they have a huge consumer market of over a billion people. There's a lot of money to be made in China if American companies can take advantage of that, but now it's harder. And so on and so forth. This, become, this could eventually escalate into a full-scale trade war. So, no. As a general rule, I don't think that tariffs are a good solution. You can do it if it turns out your unemployment is so freaking bad because you just can't be competitive. Yeah, I guess at some point you have to do tariffs. Or, there's option B. Reduce taxes, reduce regulations, and become more competitive. 
then you can have actual natural growth. But the result is that wages may not grow for a year, or they may actually go down. So the people, the people don't generally like this, but they don't always understand the repercussions of tariffs. It will indirectly affect them, but the fickle populace of the United States or wherever don't necessarily know that, which is why protectionist populist leaders can be very, very uh, popular, I guess, since they are considered populist. So, yeah, it's one of those situations where tariffs are a very good political solution and sometimes will have an economic benefit, but there is always a cost associated and people don't always understand the costs. And that's one of the reasons that I'm opposed to tariffs as a general rule. Now for us, we're gonna have to go with this anyway. And uh, because I want to reduce the uncompetitive economy, I want to skew things in my favor in order to reduce employment. Now notice this does hit international trade a lot, but that's kind of what we want. We want people to not be trading for goods. We want them to be building here in, the Aust in Australia. So that's why we're going for it. Believe it or not, it actually does make capitalists a little bit happy because uh, not capitalists in this game don't necessarily have to be free market economists. They could be the corporate side of things. And corporations sometimes will enjoy having less competition from foreign competitors. So it can be very popular. What I'm actually surprised by is that uh, capitalists are happy, but trade unions are not. I actually think that should be switched out so capitalists don't get affected, but trade unionists are much happier. Because this protects their jobs, it protects them from foreign competitors. You make $10 an hour in the United States, can't compete with the person making $2 an hour in China. And so on and so forth. So that's the idea. Now we don't need a lot. Right? We do not need much tariffs. Too much protectionism, too much, and the capitalists aren't happy at all anymore. Because, oh crap, now we can't trade anything across the ocean. No. Small tariffs, though. Capitalists like this a lot. It does not do a lot for fixing our unemployment, but it does hurt our international trade a lot. But it also reduces our uncompetitive economy. If we can reduce it by, I don't know, let's just say down to about here. Very, very small tariffs. About 165 million. This will reduce the uncompetitive economy by almost 10%, which is exactly as much as we need in order to get rid of it. So a very, very minor tariff will make a teensy bit of money in taxes, and the international trade gets hurt, and that's really the big penalty to the import tariffs. So that's what we're going to do, and I think it will work overall for us in the future. I mean, we're basically paying, uh, we're basically losing international trade in order to grow the GDP. That's the idea. And that's why some people think that tariffs work, um, at least to a small extent. Large tariffs, always bad. Small amount of tariffs, some people think it'll work. Uh, I just don't think that the math necessarily adds up on top of the principle and the diplomatic repercussions, but that's my personal view. Now, we're going to look at the economy, and I did say I want to do pass the uh, small business grants, so that's something we're going to do. It's going to cost us a few billion dollars, but small business grants are really good. Now, granted, this increases uh, capitalist membership a lot. I'm aware of this. However, it also boosts up our GDP by almost 6%, which is really, really strong. So I hate to make capitalists too happy, I hate to hurt socialism membership as much as we are, but I think we're going to need this in the long term in order to grow the economy, because if we keep running this deficit, we are going to have some problems. Serious problems in Australia. So I'm going to have to accept the fact that we upset the socialists just for the economic growth. And once the economy is large and I'm making a ton of money, then we can spend it on all sorts of progressive welfare programs that will drive the socialism membership back up. So, you know, that, that's what we're going to do. Now, by making capitalists happy, maybe they won't be as inclined to kill me. So it doesn't necessarily have to be all that bad. I mean, right now they want to kill me, but later it could be all right. Hey, we have a superhero. It's Bunny Man. Yeah, crime goes down. Credit rating de downgraded to a B again. Oh, no. But we have 22% of the vote, so that was a 12% swing in my favor in a three-month time period. I'm okay with that. Let's invest in the economy even further. We have 30 political capital to work with. That is enough to get the rural development grants. As technology advances and more and more citizens take job in our cities, there's a danger that poverty and unemployment go in the countryside. So this is a way to distort the free market in order to make the suburbs and the rural areas more prosperous. That's the idea behind it. It only costs us $1.4 billion, so it's far cheaper than the small business grants, but we're looking at another huge GDP boost of almost 6%. Also, farmers will be thrilled with us, which is something that we needed to do uh, in order to make our cabinet more effective, and unemployment, excuse me, goes down by almost 15%. So we're tackling a lot of the things that we're concerned about for a relatively good price by doing these rural development grants. Also, poor earnings go up, so the poor are happier. Equality goes up. So, uh, income equality and stuff like that. It's just good across the board. Rural development grants are one of the best policies in the game, bar none, in my opinion, and will do a lot for us in the long term. We're running a large deficit right now, but as the GDP starts going up, I'd like to think that we're going to be okay. 
All right, let's move on to the next turn. Actually, I'm going to do a quick save because I don't want to die. I know I said I don't want to cheese the game, and I have no intention of cheesing the game, but this is just kind of my way of preserving myself after having gone on a long-winded speech about the import tariffs. I don't want to have to talk about that all over again, so let's see if we can get assassinated. Nope, we had a failed assassination attempt, though. They did try to kill me. The capitalists want me dead. Whoa, oh, I hear sirens. Catch them! Go get them! <laughs> yeah, I don't know. We have no members of our parties, by the way. I'm not even in my own party, let's be honest. Niccolo Machiavelli. Politics have no relation to morals. Uh, some people might disagree with that, but I don't know. I mean, yeah, I mean that's a very pragmatic and cynical view of the world, but all right. 28 political capital to work with. So if they're trying to assassinate me, then maybe now is actually a good time to start increasing some of our uh, security measures. And also, at the same time, we'll try to get rid of street gangs and antisocial behavior. Now, if we want to survive assassination attempts, the best thing to do is to look at the security briefing here. Now, we can see that the Battenberg group, which is the capitalists, extremists, uh, are growing. There's a lot of members, very likely to try and kill me every single turn. Uh, religious and conservatives are going down, not as big of an issue. I'm kind of surprised that the Freedom League, the liberals, are not trying to kill me yet, but right now they're not. Interesting. But anyway, security effectiveness right now is adequate. And you can see here that we have armed police, CCTV cameras, curfews, all these different methods of trying uh, to, de to increase our own security and make it less likely that we get assassinated, even if these extremist groups are growing. So I'm looking at the armed police and CCTV cameras and thinking, these are two policies we've already passed. If we were to increase them, then maybe we would be able to catch people from killing me and I can survive for the rest of the game. And that's something I think I'm going to do. I'm going to look at the armed police. Okay, so we could raise this up and it's going to cost us a couple billion dollars per quarter. Liberals will be very unhappy, but they're already at 0%. Any more really doesn't matter to me that much. Street gangs, however, goes down by another 20%. So doing this will actually get rid of the street gangs uh, event entirely if we just arm all of the police with submachine guns. <laughs> Which is a little extreme, but it sounds like it's going to work. It's very effective at getting rid of crime. Just have submachine guns so no one ever resists the police ever. You know one thing they really need in this game? Is they need to have a negative event from like police ab abuse. Right, you max out the police force, you give them all guns and give them tons of authority, and they start abusing it. That would make sense. There is a mod for that, by the way. You could add a mod that adds that into the game, so you have to be a bit more balanced as far as how you approach law and order. But I do think that's kind of funny. Australia, the country that had like a mandatory gun buyback program, is now arming all of their police with submachine guns. So a defenseless populace can't possibly fight back. Ever. <laughs> it's kind of funny, really. Uh, all right, let's go for CCTV cameras. This is another thing we can do to get rid of antisocial behavior. Again, costs a bit of money, makes the liberals very unhappy. But all crime goes away because on every street corner, we are going to have face recognition software. So, you know, that whole government database thing? Yeah, we're just expanding that like crazy. Conservatives will like this by about 10%. So that's not so bad. It doesn't even cost us a lot of political capital. Let's go ahead and do that. So starting within the next like couple of turns, our security effectiveness should increase drastically. And we can fix that as well by adding in ID cards, increasing our intelligence services, tasers, you know, stuff like that. Mandatory microchip implant. I'm not sure I'm going to do that, but it would certainly be one option. All right, one other thing that we need to be worried about, though. We're trying to make capitalists happier by improving the GDP, but we do know that there are a lot of liberals who hate me. It's only a matter of time before they start joining in on the uh, extremist movements. So anything we can do to try and reduce their membership and add more conservatives is going to be very good, not only for my survival, but also for the election. And I think the best thing to do is going to be saving up some uh, political capital to try and change creationism versus evolution. So let's move on to the next turn. Hope I don't get killed. Okay, nope, there's still a, there's still a capitalist plot. Competitive economy is at an end. Good unemployment is dropping down. GDP is starting to rise. There's been a royal scandal. Oh, no! A uh, prominent member of the royal family, presumably the British royal family, since Australia still technically pays homage to them, has unfortunately made a comment that could be considered racist if taken out of context, of course. The comment was overheard by press photographers and is causing a scandal. How do we react? Support the monarch, which I think will make patriots happy and upset ethnic minorities, or the opposite, if we criticize the monarch. I mean, if it was made out of context, then of course I have to support the monarch. Truth is truth. They didn't mean it. They're not racist at all. You took that out of context. How dare you? It's just the, it's just the mainstream media distorting the narrative again. <laughs> so yeah, that, that's what we're going to do. We're just going to support the monarch. I think patriots will be happy overall. We're up to 45%, by the way, for our vote. So uh, yeah, things are starting to swing in our favor in a big honking way right now. 
I guess people are glad to see things like the uncompetitive economy going away. Good. So the GDP should be rising a lot. Yeah, it's starting to go up. Uh, one thing we do need to be considerate of is the environment. As the GDP goes up, the environment uh, starts to plummet significantly. So I'll take some steps to try and preserve the environment a little bit, maybe even this turn. I'm a little bit worried that we're going to get the water shortage event, but I find that it's really difficult to do. Anytime you get up to maximum GDP, your pollution just becomes ridiculous, and the water shortage event is almost inevitable. I'll try taking some steps to avoid it, but I'm not sure I can really handle it for, sure, for long. All right, let's go to creationism versus evolution. So this is talking about how we teach things in our public schools. Uh, in the past, I've talked about this. Some people have thought that I had brought up some logical points. You know, some people disagree. Now, I personally am of the belief that you should teach evolution so much as it is scientifically relevant, uh, not teach creationism simply because um, creationism kind of is a difficult thing to prove or disprove from a scientific standpoint. You know, we can talk about the scientific theories as much as we understand them today, but if, God cre if, if there is a God and God created the world, then maybe he used evolution to do it, maybe he didn't. Or they, I guess, if you're a polytheist, I don't know. Um, it, it's, it's impossible to prove the existence of God using science, but it's also impossible to disprove, which makes it a naturally infuriating subject. So I've said we probably shouldn't teach that in public schools. But I also have some problems with evolutionary theory, at least the way that it is taught, as if it is an absolute fact, when there's actually a lot that's still not known about evolution. Uh, some stuff that's really smart and advanced our understanding of biology significantly, but some things that are kind of being taken for granted and we aren't really questioning it and kind of creating this scientific orthodoxy where anyone who says, well, I actually don't know if I believe in these parts of evolution. Oh, a scientific heretic, right? And that's that's that mentality around evolution is what I have criticized in the past. Now, for this particular playthrough, uh, creationism versus evolution affects liberalism and religious membership. If you want to create a very liberal society and get rid of religious, then this is one of the best things you can do. It takes a long time, right? It takes like 30 turns in order to get rid of uh, religious membership by 35%. So you want to do this relatively early, which is why I'm looking at it now. But if you want to do the opposite, you could do that too. We could teach only creationism. Liberalism membership goes down by 8%. Cr uh, religious membership goes up by 35 Again, takes a very long time to make this work. However, right off the bat, depending on which one you go for, somebody is going to love you and somebody's going to hate you. So you may be trying to get rid of the religious, uh, the religious group, for example, by going for evolution. Say they're at 60% population, and you want to get rid of them, so this is one of the things you can do. Great, but now 60% of the population is going to hate you by another 30% immediately. So be prepared for any assassination attempts in the beginning of the game. Whereas right now, I'm actually not as worried about liberalism membership or what they think about me. They already hate me. So reducing their membership and increasing religious membership and giving them a reason to like me is actually perfect for this playthrough. And it's actually, interestingly enough, I always thought this was weird, it costs less political capital to teach only creationism than it does to teach only evolution. I feel like it ought to be the opposite, but it's not. It's specifically creationism, so... <laughs> okay, we're gonna go for it. Creationism only. God created the heavens and the earth, and that is all there is to be said about it. Anyone else who says otherwise gets an F on their homework. There you go. Have fun with that one. <laughs> okay, uh, let's talk a little bit about the, the uh, environment. I do think we want to do some fuel efficiency standards. This does a lot as far as trying to improve the environment and counteract the effects of the uh, GDP, the rising GDP. So, by setting a regulation on fuel efficiency for all cars, we are reducing our oil demand, and uh, we are... Actually, yeah, I'm sorry, we're not improving the environment directly, we're reducing CO2 emissions. But it's very, very cheap, and reducing CO2 emissions is good for the environment as far as this game calculates it for global warming purposes, and it also improves our foreign relations because people see us doing more to try and ca uh, tackle climate change. So that's why it was considerably important. That said, it also does increase car usage, so the irony is that I feel like it actually isn't anywhere near as effective as, I as it says it is. You know, reducing CO2 emissions is, and reducing oil consumption is good, but if you're increasing car usage, then it almost becomes a wash. Almost. Not quite. But it's very, very cheap and a very easy thing to do to try and appease the environmentalists and stuff like that. One of the things that I want to do to try and improve our economy and make people more productive is actually improve our technology colleges. Because we haven't been using this a lot, and our technology is actually not that high. I mean, it's okay. It's kind of middle of the road. But it could go way, way higher. Uh, sciences funding is another thing we could bump up, and actually, maybe I should do this first instead. If we go for particle accelerate, oh, the reason I don't want to do this right now, science funding, is because it's so much more expensive. From 4 billion up to 13, yeah, that's a lot. Whereas if we just go to tech colleges and subsidize uh, technology schools for adults, 
will increase our technology substantially for only another billion dollars. So until our GDP gets under control, this is one very cheap way to try and build things up. And then once we have more money to spend, I will increase our sciences funding and uh, we'll try to boost the GDP that way. But that's all the time we have for today. Uh, I do hope that you guys found this video interesting. Um, please be respectful in the comment section if you disagree with me about uh, import tariffs and creationism and stuff like that. You guys know why I had to do that. It's part of the playthrough. But uh, yeah, I'd be interested in hearing some of your thoughts as far as uh, tariffs. I know that they're very much an, um, a, an upcoming debate in the United States. Donald Trump has said he wants to put tariffs on Mexico in order to pay for the wall and has alluded to doing that to China as well. There's a lot of concerns about that. There's also been a lot of talk about the uh, Trans-Pacific Partnership deal that he just struck down, which could be huge. But that's another, that's another topic for me to talk about. If you guys want to ask me questions about that in the comment section, I'm happy to address it. So anyway, let me know what you guys think. Uh, be sure to hit that like button if you did find this video enjoyable. Leave a comment uh, with your suggestions and subscribe if you have not already. My name is Promise, and I will see you guys next time. <laughs>